The following show is brought to you in part by support from Robbins, Kaplan, Miller, and Cerisi. We don't just practice law, we make history. Online at rkmc.com. And Wells Fargo. Let us help you reach your next stage. Hello and welcome. As part of our third annual series with Minnesota leaders, I'm very pleased to introduce you tonight to my guest, Marian Etzweiler. Marian was the president and CEO of the Minneapolis Foundation for 10 years from 1984 to 1994. She was uh, involved with CHART from the very early days, the Career Development Organization for Women. She was the executive director there for two years, associate director for another couple years before that. She's been very involved in our community in a, a variety of ways. I want to just read you a couple of the things that she has done. She um, currently is with the Hubert Humphrey Institute for Public Affairs as one of the advisory council members. She's co-chair of the Congregation's Building Community, which um, We'll talk more about it sometime, uh, downtown Minneapolis. She's a, a trustee at the Westminster Presbyterian Church and at the United Theological Seminary. She has been um, extremely involved with women's issues, and you say that social justice and, and the role of women has kind of guided your involvement through the years when you've evolved, as you right. were just telling me. Um, has been your pattern, Marian. Well, that's right. I think social justice for women and all of women's issues have been with me for a long time. And that really, I think, started because my mother was a feminist as well. And that was long before people thought about people of my mother's age being a feminist. So I just grew up with it and I always felt strongly that women needed to be equal to men. You were an only child, Marion. Yes. And your father was a professor. Mm -hmm. Your mother, as you say, an active community um, yes. activist and um, she was volunteer. A, she was a volunteer primarily after marriage, but not entirely. My mother was a very fine musician. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the Second World War, she did a lot of work with choirs and did a lot of concert work mm -hmm. with um, choirs with the Bendix Aviation Corporation but she was primarily so a So she was also, um, I, I think of Marion as a very eclectic woman, and as you listen to her tonight, I think you'll, you'll come to uh, agree with me. But she was also eclectic then, wasn't she? Was. She was, oh, absolutely, yes. Um, you, you were born in Chicago, but mm -hmm. grew up primarily in Indiana. Indiana. Um, yes. Went to the University of Indiana and majored in physics. That's right. And your first job was um, as a research engineer with Bendix. That's right. Um, did you like science? I, I can't quite picture you <laughs> I know. in the science, so long scientist I know role. It. Well, people tend to think of scientists in a very different way from people who are involved in maybe in social action. But yes, I did. And it, I, I really loved it. And it was really, I got started because of my father. And um, when I was maybe 10 years old or so, he was teaching physics and chemistry. And uh, I used to go to his lab on Saturdays and wash test tubes and so forth and so on. And at that early age, I said, I'm going to major in physics. <laughs> and I did. I really didn't even know what I was saying, but I stayed with it. Did he um, support that and encourage that? Oh, yes. I'm sure yes. he oh, yes. enjoyed so that. Oh, very much so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you said <clears throat> in some interview that I, I read recently that your parents gave you the feeling that you could pretty much do whatever you wanted. Is That's that right. accurate? Absolutely, and I think maybe that was one of those benefits of being 
an only child and particularly born to older parents. There was mm -hmm. just lots of support and no question that whatever I wanted to do was possible. So I never worried about that. Did you feel that you were kind of pushing um, the edge a bit as, as you went through school, as you chose your um, profession as an engineer at Bendix? I mean, those I were yeah. not the easiest of times for no, women. No, and I was generally the only woman there. I was certainly the only woman in my class at Indiana University. Mm -hmm. And uh, there would probably be one woman in the class for many of those years then. So I was that, and that was, you always had to push to be sure that you were taken seriously. And I do remember at Bendix, particularly, I worked for two different divisions, mm -hmm. having to work very hard to be sure that I was included in whatever it was that the, the male engineers were doing. Did you feel that you were successful in being accepted? Um, I did. By yes, working did. extra hard? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You had to learn how to make that happen. And there were ways to do that. But part of it was that you, uh, I, I can just remember simply saying, I need to be here. I need to be attending this course. And the one I remember was carburetor school. Mm -hmm. Everybody was going off to do something special with some carburetor thing, and I was not invited to go. And everybody else was. And so I just said, I should be there also. And it, it happened. Did you find it frustrating, Marion, to, to have to be pushing and working harder, or did you just take it, I mean, as you described yeah. it, now it's kind mm -hmm. of like you took it mm -hmm. in stride, but yeah, it must I have been think hard. Probably inside I was probably angry about it, but you don't get very far that way. You know, mm -hmm. you learn that pretty quickly, that there are ways in which you do things and that. So I, I think it was just an idea of just, you just keep pushing, you just keep working at it, and pretty soon people realize that need to, they need to change. No. It worked. You, yes, it certainly worked. <laughs> you, um, your second Bendix job was mm -hmm. out in New York, in the New York City right. area. Mm -hmm. How did you get back to Minneapolis, or get to Minneapolis? You have lived here for years. I have. Um, my husband have, had just finished a residency at New York Cornell in New York City and was trying to decide where to go, whether to stay in research or to practice, and the opportunity came to go to St. Louis Park Medical Center. And so we came back, we moved here. We knew we wanted to come back to the Midwest and it was a great opportunity. We knew nothing about Minnesota, but uh, that's how we got here. Mm. So yeah. kind of a leap of faith. Exactly, uh -huh. yes. Mm -hmm. And now you, you're you a real Minnesotan. Oh, well, yes, this uh, first child was three weeks old when we moved. Mm. So I can always remember exactly how many yes. years we've lived here. So. You have four children, four and children. they've yeah. all uh -huh. um, done what they wanted to do and have done That's well, right. and um, have. I'm yeah. sure you've been That's very right. proud and are very proud of them. Um, did you have a mentor, Marion, um, other than your parents? Was there anyone mm -hmm. that you looked at and thought, I want to be like that person, or got support from someone that I was outside the family? That, I don't think in my early years and in my early professional work that I had a mentor, I, the first time that I can think that I had somebody who kind of took on that role was when I was at the Minneapolis Foundation and mm -hmm. one of the several uh, chairs of the board, one of the men, Stanley Cowell, uh, sort of took that role on in a sense and, and was a wonderful. I mean, he was, mm -hmm. a, he was a coach in the sense that he wanted to see me succeed there and he wanted to see that that everything good could happen for me that was there and so mm -hmm. um, he was he, and Stan Cowell I think many people and many viewers might even remember who's long retired was at one time the administrator of Hennepin County yes and then after that he went to Piper Jaffray but he was board chair so he was and great board chair during most during, of your tenure well, there well no because the board chairs were really uh, chairs for two years, mm, okay. so I had a whole series of them. Uh -huh. <laughs> so but he, he was one out. of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he was one of them. And did he? The the role of a mentor is so varied. But did he take extra time to give you um, feedback, to give you ideas? To yeah. 
He did. How sort of specifically? Mm -hmm. How did that work? Well, I think as we would be, just we would meet frequently. Although I have to give credit to every board chair. Every board chair there was met with me on a regular basis. But I think Stan had this sort of extra personal concern and caring for me mm -hmm. about wanting things to be right. Mm -hmm. So we would simply talk through what were the issues of the day, and there were issues from mm -hmm. time to time. There always sure. are when you are leading something. And we would simply talk back and forth, decide which was the best way to go. But it was very free with, with help and mm -hmm. advice. I think so. everybody longs to have a Stan in their life. I know, they do. <laughs> yeah, he, uh -huh. and, and we still are in touch. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so it's That's very nice. Wonderful. Yeah, it's been great. I'm sure the audience is curious how you made the leap from mm -hmm. the research engineer work out in right. New York. We know how you got back to Minneapolis, but you don't just no. get the job as CEO and president, no. although you had the, the chart job in the... I in did. Well, there was quite a gap in there because when we left New York and came to Minneapolis, that was a time that I stopped being in the paid work world. Mm -hmm. And there was a 16-year hiatus in there while I had children and uh, got them started. And while they were still in school, I, I decided that I was really itching to go back and do mm -hmm. something. So that's when I went for a short time, well, three years to the University of Minnesota on a half-time mm -hmm. basis to work mm -hmm. in health sciences, continuing education. And uh, that was, and the way I did that was I didn't, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to do something and get back. So I kept just saying everybody, I'm looking for a job. Ah, <laughs> what a job. Uh -huh. This is what I like to do. And sooner or later, somebody heard it and said, I hear there's such and such an opening at the U. Ah. So that's how I got back into it. But I did have this break. And if you're in science and you have 16 years that you're out of it, you know, either you start yes, all you over again have to. Mm -hmm. or you just go off in a different mm -hmm. track. But it has always been helpful to me to have the science background. I think it's transferable in many ways. You know, Rita Clark King um, yeah. was on the show last year, and she said mm -hmm. the same thing, mm -hmm. that there were certain things about her scientific early years that um, were very yes. helpful oh, yeah. and transferable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I think part of it is um, you have a systems approach to the way mm. you look at things. I mean, you're, you are trained in a certain way to look at things, to analyze things, and it's, it helps. You do it almost, mm. it's unconscious in a way. Mm -hmm. but it would maybe helpful. give a person too kind of a objectivity about one's That's role. Right. Absolutely. That might yeah. not come as yeah. easily to someone That's without right. that scientific no, background. True. Yeah, I think that's very true. Yeah. Marion, what do you think are the, the best ingredients for a good leader? What do you value when you mm -hmm. think of leadership? I think it's important to feel sure of yourself mm -hmm. and to feel confident that you are capable of what you're doing. I think it's also mm -hmm. very important to listen to other people to not feel that you have to take the full responsibility for whatever is going on and that you enlist other people and that other people are part of the process. And I, th I think to think about whatever that job is is somehow a team mm -hmm. or people working together because you don't accomplish it on your own. But I think that I do think you need to feel some confidence in yourself and your abilities. That, so. um, that's something that doesn't just automatically show up the day you start the big new job, though, does no. it? I oh, mean, no. It, no, no. It comes with, it comes with time. some hard knocks. And, and I can think about it, I think particularly about the Minneapolis Foundation, uh, that position. I had never been in that kind of work before. Mm -hmm. And so I had a lot to learn. And it was, it was a fairly steep learning curve. And I think at about, after about three years, I suddenly thought to myself, you know, I think I've got it all under my thumb. Ah. I think I know. It's so complex. There are so many parts to it. I am sure. So it took a long time to get there. So those first three mm -hmm. years must have mm -hmm. been stressful, um, exhausting, well, feeling I wouldn't that say you three weren't. Years, but I would say six months, eight mm -hmm. months, something okay. like that. You okay. know, and after that, you're just kind of moving along. But the first part, yes, very mm -hmm. much so. Why do you think they hired you? I, mean, I don't You know, I don't. when you hadn't had any well, experience in... 
foundation I, work. I, I think, well, I don't know why they hired me when you mentioned <laughs> it. I, well, they did a national search. Mm -hmm. And um, I really resisted applying for this, and I became, I was urged by people in the community to apply for it because I was quite happy doing what I was doing. So the last hour of the last day, I put in my application. And it, mm -hmm. it turned out that um, I was the one. And I think this will, this maybe Mary is a little off, but on the other hand, it kind of shows the value of having done a lot of networking and the value of knowing broad groups of people because I did know five of the six people on the search committee. Mm -hmm. So I, when I applied, I wasn't an unknown mm -hmm. object to them. So they knew your personal they knew me in a way, um, strengths. Yeah, they knew and because some of them had served on other boards with me mm -hmm. or they knew me because I had done lots of community volunteer work. Mm -hmm. So that was good. I think that would have been different, but then I think I guess they chose me eventually because they thought I had what they were looking for beyond what anybody else had. And which you was great. tripled the um, the foundation's assets during In your the ten, ten years, years. That's right, which is a mm. fantastic accomplishment. Well, it was great, and it was a it was quite small given the the assets were quite low when I started, and I didn't mind working on that. I think some people don't like to think about development and fundraising. Mm -hmm. But I have to say something in all fairness about that. Um, I left and it just doubled again and it's doubled again because you know, that's, part of, that's part of what happens. One, uh, if you do good work, you're going to, that's gonna happen. So mm -hmm. that's the pleasing part to me is the fact that when I left, I think it was in very good shape and therefore the building went on very well and it's yes. thriving Had as it well. not done no. well, you would have I think that been, been different. wondering yeah. What, yeah. what could I have mm -hmm. done differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What has been the hardest thing when you look at all your leadership positions yes. since the foundation before, what's been the challenge that caused you the most um, uh, mental anguish and, and struggle? Worry. Mm -hmm. Worry. Well, I think this won't be a surprise probably to anybody who's worked in any kind of an organization. I think occasional personnel mm -hmm. difficulties. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that's, I'm almost certain that in most any organization, most of the people who are hired know how to do the job. Mm -hmm. But it's the getting along together or it's meeting the requirements that are expected in that working together. Um, trying to be loyal and, and being part of an organization that's important. Mm -hmm. And you, you just inevitably run into those kinds of situations and those are tough. But I did mm -hmm. learn, I did finally learn. You wanna know what I learned? I would love to know and I'm sure the audience <laughs> I learned would. about that. I finally learned after a long time that you can't always save people. And I think, mm -hmm. I think everybody who has any compassion wants to save people and wants to keep a person mm -hmm. at the job. Keep giving and them a chance to give another chance, get back another on track. Chance. And uh -huh. I finally learned that it's not fair, certainly not fair to the organization, it's not fair to all the mm -hmm. terrific employees who are doing well. And maybe not even fair to the person and then that's right. Yes. Underachieving. Exactly, and that's the second piece of it. And it's not mm -hmm. fair to the person who is not doing the, mm -hmm. what is needed because that person really is under a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. And I've decided that in the long run, when I can think of just a couple of examples, that in the long run, each of these people was much happier and better off afterwards and had the chance to go on where the fit was better. Mm -hmm. But it's part of you know, being kind and wanting to make it right. And sometimes it just doesn't work. So those were the, those are what I think of as the stressful things. I've had other leaders say similar really? things. I uh -huh. think it's a, a universal tough thing. As a, a team leader, a, a leader mm -hmm. who valued the mm -hmm. work of team mm -hmm. work so much, do you think you sometimes um, had more personnel problems to deal with because you were so inclusive? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or do you think that um, no, is I don't a think separate so. I don't think issue. that was it. I think that was kind of a separate issue. Mm -hmm. and, a, and, I, and the, the teams that I worked with were wonderful. You know, we had a great, great time. We always did teamwork, mm -hmm. both at Chart and um, certainly at, at the Minneapolis Foundation. I had a 
a group of people and we met every Monday afternoon and their input was so valuable and um, I think it couldn't have done without them. Mm -hmm. You said somewhere that it's very hard to think of all the possibilities by oneself exactly. and there is that yes. wonderful energy mm -hmm. that comes from brainstorming. Oh, and yes. It's great. Putting heads together, mm -hmm. isn't And there? sometimes realizing that the idea that you had was totally off, uh -huh, that you but, were wrong, and that other people saw it differently. But I think that also points to another thing that's very important, and that is you always want to hire the strongest, best people you can possibly find mm -hmm. to be with you. Mm -hmm. You never worry about being threatened or being mm -hmm. overpowered because, you know, that's, that's important, and that... It, it, you end up looking good yourself because you've got great people with you. Well, that so. ties back to what you said, too, about the importance of good self-esteem as a leader. Right. If you didn't have that, no, you, you wouldn't, wouldn't want to hire exactly. a real up-and-coming right. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. a strong person might be threatening. Another thing that I can think of is that I think in my last year or so when I was at the foundation, I realized how important it was for other people. Well, I guess I hope I'd realized it before that, but I thought it was a very important at that point for other people to begin getting a lot of credit for the things that were happening. I didn't always have to be the one that got the credit for mm -hmm. this was my idea. Mm -hmm. And to realize it for how helpful that was for others to be recognized and in a sense be pushing them and helping them move along with their own careers. And that was extremely satisfying feels good when you do that. I am sure. Uh, um, as a early woman leader mm -hmm. in Minnesota, mm -hmm. um, are you satisfied, Marion, with where women are today in our corporations and our nonprofits? Are we as far along as you thought we would be back when you and Judy and mm -hmm. Carol were mm -hmm. starting chart in 77? Well, we're leaps and leaps forward from that, of course, but uh, I probably would never be satisfied. Mm -hmm. uh, we've certainly made huge strides, and um, an organization that I belong to, I think is a good example, the Minnesota Women's Economic Roundtable, which is comprised of a lot of the women leaders in the, in the uh, area. And I am just amazed at the numbers of women who are coming along, who are holding really big, strong, responsible positions. Mm -hmm. So it's happening, but it's a long way to go. If you look at the number of women on boards, on corporate boards, mm -hmm. it's still small. Mm -hmm. Percentages number of are women low. in politics exactly. is very you look small. At in the legislature mm -hmm. and so on. So there's a long way to go. So you're optimistic, but somewhat yeah. disappointed in summary. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, you know, just keep moving forward and keep not, you mm -hmm. can't let up. Mm -hmm. Keep yeah. pushing. Mm -hmm. We just have a couple minutes left, but I want to ask you a little bit about the Juggling Act as a executive working um, and still parenting. Yes. I think we keep mm -hmm. parenting yes. <laughs> into <laughs> infinity. Right. Of course um, we do. <laughs> how, how did you balance that? Are you high energy? Was it um, not a great challenge? Or what, what were um, your secrets? Well, let's see. When I started, went back, again and was, I guess I'm thinking principally at chart, the children were in junior high and high school. So it was not as difficult. I, I didn't go back into the work, paid work world when they were very little. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have those kinds of worries. But it was a juggling act, but I was able to do it, you know, all the, the transportation and so forth. I also had a very supportive spouse mm -hmm. who took on what he could do when he could, when he was available. But um, it wasn't as hard for me, but I think maybe that's because I went back when the children were a little bit older. Yeah. And were they supportive of what you oh, were doing? Very, were they very much proud so. of yes. their mom, yes, they were. who was a very visible supportive. community mm -hmm. person? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, of the, one of my daughters liked to cook, and I could simply call her up and say, start this, do that, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. you know, so I, had, I had help at home from them. Um, in just a, a minute or so, Marion, tell us about the transition from being an executive director to mm -hmm. being um, a board member now of, of many boards. Mm -hmm. But have, have you liked the change or has, have you missed some of the 
um, headier work mm -hmm. that you used mm -hmm. to do? I've enjoyed it a lot. I like boards. I had been on boards way back, but mm -hmm. then when I was at the foundation, that was a conflict of interest, so then I was. So then I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So then I went back to it, and I do like it. I do enjoy it very much, and um, I, I, it can be pretty heady as well. I mean, in a way, you've yes. got all the same challenges, only you're on the other side of the fence, in a sense. And you're not yeah. there at 8 in the morning and no, working until no. 6 and or 7 at night. And the big thing is to remember that you're working on policy and not micromanaging the poor people who are <laughs> running the place and telling them what to do. And that's, mm -hmm. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. But I've enjoyed it. I like it a lot. And you continue to have an eclectic I do. life, don't you, in I terms do. of Very much so. what you're yeah. choosing to get involved yes. with. Yeah. And, and yeah. Um, Affordable housing is my big thing now that I'm trying to do some work in that area. With the downtown, downtown. congregations, mm -hmm. which, as I said earlier, I hope we can uh, delve into that topic another time. But right. thank you so much for coming welcome. down and sharing um, a bit of your very eclectic, as I said, and um, intriguing life, Marion. It's been great. Thanks, Mary. I've enjoyed it, too. Good. Thank you for being with us. We'll be back again next week. Until then, have a good week. <laughs>